Hello and welcome to another episode of Hoax or Holy Grail. I'm wearing my happiness is a state of mind shirt to remind myself to be careful about the words that I'm using as I discuss the topic of banned books. I also in the background have my little gnome, my little zen gnome to remind me to stay in that grounded happy place and focus on the message that I want to convey as in bringing awareness to the subject and not getting off on a tangent. I know there are some people who may think this isn't that big a deal and why are so many people talking about it? Having worked in schools and being aware that our shelves were being cleared off and the reason given is, oh, students weren't taking the books out or the books are old, etc. As I read Bellwether a while back, that character is also talking about books disappearing from the shelves and the same reason is given. Oh, people aren't interested, they're not signing them out. So it's rather interesting to now get into this issue much deeper. For me, the banned book issue is much like an iceberg. You see the tip of it, which for me in this case began with watching the video by MJ on the hashtag 24BB and reading 24 banned books in 2024. What is a banned book? It means someone has put forward a challenge, a concern, why they believe that material should not be easily accessible to other people. In other words, removed from a school or public library. Sometimes it means the book isn't even available because you can't buy it anywhere. So for many of the books, a more appropriate term would be challenged books because there have certainly been a number of challenges put against them. And in some cases, they're not accepted and the material continues to be available through schools and public libraries. And of course, if you do a search, you can find different places to buy them. For me, as I say, this has become an iceberg because it isn't just that books are being challenged as I've read different articles and checked out different websites. The issue may have come to awareness because of the increased challenges and book bans in the United States as some articles list, but it's also increasing here in Canada where I live. There are concerns in the United Kingdom as well, which is the third country that I looked at to put together this video. So it really is a much bigger issue than we see at first glance. It isn't just politicians. There are a number of different groups involved in these challenges. Although thankfully there also are a number of groups involved in fighting to keep those resources available, things like Freedom to Read Week, book sanctuaries, and I'll talk about all of those throughout the video. But this issue really has made me start to wonder, probably because I just read George Orwell's 1984 for the second time a few months ago, and it really does make you wonder whether the Ministry of Truth may actually be something in our future, just not the date that Orwell thought it would be. Here in Canada, we have the Freedom to Read website. It is actually a very good website for information about a variety of issues regarding the Freedom to Read. It's a great resource for getting involved with Freedom to Read Week, which, as I say, here in Canada is in February, so it's just past this year. But they have great ideas for things that you can do personally, getting involved in the community, and getting the word out there. So I highly recommend, if you are a Canadian watching this, 
and having access to books, whether book in hand, ebook audio is important to you, be sure to go check out that website. There are a number of great articles and tips there, as I said. One article that caught my attention is from the CTV News website. This was written by Abby O'Brien and published on February the 25th, 2023, so a year ago. She's talking about a collection of 50 books. The collection declares all of TPL's locations as book sanctuaries and offers a new stream of programming that allows users to explore intellectual freedom challenges. Now, this initiative, the Book Sanctuaries, began in 2022 at the Chicago Public Library, and you can learn more about that by going to the Chicago Public Library website. Another part of this article that definitely stood out for me is the move comes at a time when globally many well-known books are being reevaluated, rewritten, and sometimes outright banned from shelves. And yes, in my notes, I do have 1984 Orwell because he does, of course, the main character in that novel, of course, works for the Ministry of Truth, where they rewrite everything, news articles and books to coincide with what the government is telling them to believe at the current moment in time. And this is why I personally have a big issue with older works being changed and updated. I get that some of it may be upsetting to people or hit a nerve, but what those people are forgetting is that those are teachable moments for other people. When you forget history, you're bound to keep repeating it. So this whole, let's pretend this didn't happen. Let's pretend these words were never used. Let's get rid of all these people who we once named schools after and made statues of. Let's just try and erase all of them and not talk about any of this. And I'm thinking, wow, look at everything that people are going to forget and not understand why treating people in a certain way is unacceptable. Other issues that have come up in the news, these are again from last year. So I actually looked at two other articles. These are both from, these are both from February 2023. The first article is the London Public Library celebrates start of Freedom to Read Week. This is uh, from February the 19th, 2023. It's by Ibrahim Lin. And it starts off, this year's Freedom to Read Week carries even more importance with many parts of the United States looking to implement more and more book bans. Most of these book bans are being spearheaded by conservative lawmakers, politicians, and parent groups. My thought was, do lawmakers and politicians not have something bigger to do with their day? I mean, they're making six-figure salaries. From what I've seen in the news, there are tons of people who are in need of homes, in need of support, in need of jobs. Yeah, I don't know. I'm thinking maybe that should be a priority for those individuals. But, you know, I'm not in politics, so I guess not. This particular article talked about two authors who had appeared at one of the library branches and we're reading from their works. Jennifer Wen is a trans woman 
who started writing in early 2017, basing her poems on her own experience and transition. Tom Prime is also an author of poetry. He has an MFA in creative writing at the University of Victoria, a BA at Western University, and he is working on his PhD at Western. I'm pointing out his education because he went on to describe his own writing process taking heavily from his childhood growing up homeless while struggling with addiction after being abused physically, sexually, and emotionally. So here is a young man who wasn't born with, what do they say, a silver spoon in his mouth. Obviously, very challenging childhood, didn't even have a home, roof over his head. And yet, here he is all these years later. Not only is he educated, continuing his education, but also writing about his experience, which I believe would be important to read as for other individuals who may be questioning or wondering, can I do this? I've, you know, I've been through all this. How do I get to the other side? Tom Prime would definitely be an individual worth getting to read and seeing and appreciating Yes, there are people who go through very challenging things, but you know what? It doesn't mean that they can't turn things around. It takes a lot of hard work, effort, support from other people, but you can get there. Jennifer Wen, important for people who may be questioning where are they at and what could this experience potentially be? Those are important voices for people to hear. And maybe it isn't a voice that you want to hear. And maybe it isn't an issue that you want to talk about. But that doesn't mean that you should be able to stop other people who need to hear that voice from having access to it. The other article that was quite interesting was a month later, May the 18th. Culture Wars flare at London Library over speaker's blocked lecture on gender. So remember what I said about the article a month before. A controversial free speech activist and author is slamming the London Public Library for barring her from delivering a public lecture at the downtown branch a move she calls textbook illustration of contemporary censorship. Now, I don't know this activist, and I do know from reading the article, the library decided not to rent the space because they actually had concerns that there may be some protest, that it could potentially become violent, that it would not be safe for some of the other patrons. The individual who made the complaint is Joanna Williams. She is a British commentator and lecturer. I don't know, as I say, anything about her. I haven't looked into her yet. The library had stated there were multiple policy-related concerns, which is why they said no to the request. And you don't have to feel too badly about this because they got this group got space at the Delta London Armories. And if you know about that location, it is very swanky. And so they didn't end up you know, having to rent space in a basement or something. The Society for Academic Freedom and Scholarship was having a two-day annual meeting. So the speaker was coming to do a presentation for that. According to this article, this nonprofit group was founded in London 
in 1992. The odd thing is the next paragraph goes on to say the nonpartisan Halifax based group advocates against codes of conduct for speech, so called anti hate legislation that infringes on academics' ability to teach and research controversial subjects and diversity policies that favor student or faculty groups based on race or sex instead of merit-based ground, its website says. Sure, it sounds like this group may have begun here in London, but then it goes on to say they're Halifax-based. So I need to look a bit more into that group and in particular what it is that they're concerned about and why the library had an issue. Interesting that within a month, we have an article about freedom to read, access to information, but then in the very next month, we have a, we don't feel comfortable with you speaking because of the potential of issues and some of what you're saying goes against some of our policies. So I'll definitely be looking into those two articles more in the future. And again, like I say, this is why for me, this has become a huge iceberg. Another factor that I did want to mention here, and for those who may not be familiar with the individual on this slide, this would be Stephen Leachy our Minister of Education, or so he is paid for. Yes, I am going to be very careful as I get through this final portion, because yes, I am surprised that Premier Ford and Mr. Leachy have actually clued in that maybe there is something that needs to be done about these growing books being challenged and wanting to be banned. And if you can tell from the way my voice is going, no, I'm not a fan of certain government individuals, but I am going to try and keep that out of this video. The article that I had seen does say that they are making some changes to what's going on and that they're trying to deal with this issue, meaning they actually want books and information accessible to students. However, what that article did not address, and parents may not be aware, and I've been out of the system for six years, so it's time for some other people to start stepping up and cluing in. But if the libraries are closed, students don't have access to materials. That needs to change. Libraries and schools, my biased opinion, should be open from the time the bell rings in the morning till the time the bell rings at the end of the day. It means you have students having access to those materials. It means you have students who are on spares staying in the buildings instead of wandering the neighborhoods. I've been out of the system for six years, so it's up to the parents and the teachers to address the issue, just like this issue of banned books is finally starting to be addressed. This is a bit longer than I had planned. I know I will be editing this from my original taping. What are your thoughts? Have I mentioned anything that you weren't already aware of? Am I kind of the only one who's had those holy crap moments as I began to look into reasons that books were banned and how the ripple effect of all of this is just going farther and farther into what's happening in classrooms, the information that students are getting or lack thereof, depending on where they are, of course. Do you think libraries should be open full-time during school hours? And if you're a parent, I would suggest you look into what's going on in that building where your kids are going to be educated. 
are you worried about any of your books disappearing? And with that, I mean your audio and ebooks. I don't have them. My husband does. And, you know, I just maybe at some think, and maybe I'm just being a pessimist, but I'm thinking at some point it's not going to so much be an issue of burning books as it is finding a delete button. But I could be wrong. Comment down below and let me know what your thoughts are. This page lists some of the sources that I had referred to. If you want more information about it, you could certainly email me. If you want more information about this or you would like to get in touch with me, you can go to Google Chat and you can send me a direct message. Also, if you'd like to set up a conversation about books or some of the other topics that I discuss, Google offers the opportunity to set up spaces, which are rooms where you invite only the people that you want and you can direct message each other, and carry on a conversation. You can also share files. So there's another opportunity to connect as well. On this list, I also have Bill C367 and Bill C63. These are from Canada and I'm currently reviewing them. I know people have mentioned them and concerns about the content. I'm not going to get into them because I haven't read them or reviewed them. I know one of them has to do with some changes to the criminal code as my employment prior to working in schools did involve having to be familiar with the criminal code as well as being a case manager with clients and I'll kind of leave that at that for now but I do want to carefully review and contemplate what's in those documents because unfortunately like with books people quickly glance at these things, but because it's government and written in a certain way, you really need to take some time to read it, digest it, and process it to fully understand what it is they're trying to say and whether if, as it seems initially, it's a bad thing or it's just the wording is tripping some people up. So that is something that I personally will be looking further into. Not sure whether it'll ever come up in a video, perhaps in a book review, if it relates to that. But in any case, I just wanted to put that down here because it does certainly relate back to the banned book issue. If you're in the United States or the United Kingdom, I have no doubt you also have documents that relate back to this type of thing. So if you're interested, it isn't just about reading books to raise awareness. There's so much more that can be done to address this issue. As always, thank you so much for the gift of your time. If you found this video to be of interest or of benefit, if it tweaked your curiosity about banned books, be sure to give that like button a tickle and leave me a comment down below as both of those help me to get out to other viewers who may be of like mind and who may also be interested in my content, which as you may know is quirky and eclectic. And yes, JP, thank you. I'm going to stick with that because it's accurate. I don't just talk about books. I also have nature videos and my silly cats on Friday. So if that's of interest to you, make sure you click on that subscribe button and definitely turn on the notification bell so you know when I upload content that may be of interest to you. Until next time, have a great one. Take good care.